Steve Paulson here for the East Coast Conference. We're in Bridgeport, Connecticut, where the University of Bridgeport Purple Knights have won the ECC Men's Basketball Championship with a 61-53 victory over the Dowling College Golden Lions. Joined today by the head coach of the Purple Knights, Mike Ruan. Mike, thanks for stopping by. Thanks, Steve. Mike, uh, your team had a, a bit of a shaky start to the season, took a little time to find your pace. Uh, when did you think that you guys had a real good chance to make another run at the championship title? Actually, before the season started, Steve, I thought we had the pieces that we would be right in the mix with, with the CW Post, New York Tech, UBC. Um, we were preseason third, and then Dion Waiters went down with an injury. Uh, another kid who didn't even play all year, Courtney Golf, transferred from Southern Illinois, went down with an injury, so we had no point guard. And thus, we lost five straight games against the ACC teams, and, you know, it took us a while to get on a run. You seem to hit your stride in the second half of the season. Uh, also, you, you made some uh, big changes in the team, and the addition of JoJo Swift uh, clearly was a turning point for the squad. Yeah, JoJo is a playmaker, and like I said, because we, we lost point guard early, we were able to bring in JoJo, a, a transfer from UMBC, um, second semester, and, and he was able to mesh with the team and, and give us that added dimension as a playmaker and scorer and allow guys like Ivan Simic the ability to catch and shoot the three. You look at the way today's game progressed. Uh, was it a bit of a different job of preparation for you? It was a quick turnaround off a of victory Thursday night, and Dowling uh, was probably not a team you were necessarily expecting to be here. Did it change your prep for the game, or were you set in the way your team was going to perform today? No, I think I think Dowling's, um, the fact that they had continued to improve and improve, and they were on a roll, and with their five-out, undersized offense, dribble drive, kick, shoot the three, that was most difficult to prepare for. So it's one thing to tell the guys, you know, keep Keep guys in front of you and help side and rotate. It's another thing to execute that against a, a, a well-coached team like Downey. Over the last eight minutes of the first half and about the first 10, 11 minutes of the second half, the team only allowed one field goal. You had a similar streak in the victory over Malloy Thursday night. Is there something that your team does in terms of just getting extra focus? To, what, what is it that you think makes that defensive difference in a game for you? Guys? Well, I think Deion Waiters puts a lot of pressure on passing lanes, and he puts a lot of pressure on the ball and uh, you know gets in passing lanes, and teams aren't as comfortable moving the ball with him on the floor. And he gives us a lot of energy, Steve, but uh, getting stops at the defensive end and allows us to get on runs. And, and when we're able to do that, you know, it's really good for us. Now, Dowling made a terrific run in the second half, got themselves back into this game. Anyone who's watched them knows they're a feisty squad and that they weren't going to give up. What do you think got them back into the game? Was it something your team did? Was it something they did or a combination of the two? I think they were consistent, never give up. And then they got some back doors. They spread us out. They were able to dribble drive to the basket, get to the free throw line. And then we started dropping our heads, didn't move the ball on offense, and didn't get good shots. And Dowling was, was able to really cut it close and, and could have easily pulled it off. You know, but we were able to get some, some field goals down the stretch. You called the timeout during that big stretch where Dowling made the run, one in particular after a couple of turnovers. What did you tell your team then, and how do you feel they reacted? Well, I just told them we have to just keep our composure. Now's the time to play together. You know, when, when things aren't going well for you, you need to stick together. And, you know, sometimes just one basket, one field goal, and I thought it was Lloyd Antoine's follow-up that he finished kind of really gave us the confidence, like, we're going to win this game. We're going to win this game. You mentioned Lloyd Antoine, and he was a great example of the next question I'm going to ask. Darian David was not the best player on the floor today, and he really didn't have to be. Uh, talk a little bit about your team's depth when you look at the con contributions you've gotten from Cur Curtis Loving. Ivan Simic didn't have a point in the first half and got some big buckets for you in the second. It just seemed like there was always a different hero, and of course, JoJo Swift. Yeah, you got to have depth at this level, you know, and even the higher levels. You got to have guys who come in and have good games. Sometimes guys aren't going to shoot the ball well, but as long as their defense is consistent, Dion had a poor shooting night, but his defense was consistent. Darian was in a little bit of a funk, but he played really hard tonight so that's the key as long as guys are playing hard the offense goes up and down defense is supposed to be consistent well the downside that any coach in your position will take is that you get about 15 seconds to appreciate and enjoy this the NCAA tournament selections are going to be made and then you're right back in the gym to prepare how do you think your team is set for the upcoming regional tournament uh, I think we were we're uh It'll be interesting because these teams in the Northeast 10 are a little bit different than us. You know, we're a little bit scrappier and we play 
more up tempo. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, how we're able to play that type of um, NCAA regional game. Are we able to keep our composure and, you know, playing with media timeouts and being able to, you know, be focused and while we're on the road in the NCAA tournament. But, you know, this is a step that we needed to take to get to a tournament and maybe we can, you know, one game at a time in advance. Well, we will see is that, uh, again, the seedings will be announced on Sunday, and the University of Bridgeport Purple Knights, by virtue of their automatic bid at a 61-53 victory over Dowling College, will be there this year. Mike, we'd like to wish you and your team all the best of luck. Thank you, Steve. And you can follow the progress of the Bridgeport Purple Knights, as well as uh, the entire region. Uh, information will be posted on eccsports.org. You can check the men's basketball section for that and much, much more. For the East Coast Conference, this is Steve Balson.